Hello and welcome to the Principal Liner Notes podcast. I am completely delighted to have Jennifer Morose here on the podcast. It, J- Jennifer is is prolific in in her professional development offering. She is prolific in the work that she does around learning frameworks and, and assessments. She's also a fellow podcaster, which we will, which we will get into as well. And, and, and the other thing, Jennifer, that, that, that I, is I was kind of going through the greatest hits of, 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 of this podcast, you may be, in fact, I'm going to bet everything. I'm going to bet my mortgage and, and my entire <laughs> collection that I, I'm almost certain that you are the first person from Canada to be a guest on this podcast. My goodness, I'm so honored, Sean. Yes. Really? I'm so honored. You have no idea. Canada did Canada Day's right around the corner. And and uh so so this is this is well timed. Um I but I, I I again if I'm going through all the hosts or guests rather that I've hosted. Yeah. I kind of wonder, Sean, if you might be right, because I did go through, like, I always follow what you're doing, and I've looked at past guests, and I, I didn't see anyone Canadian, so. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh. this is, this is oh, great, I'm this such is an, great, I'm Amy. so honored. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so, very, very honored to have you here, and, and, and I'm just excited for our, our upcoming, I'm, I'm already excited because our co- pre-show conversation was just so uh, enriching, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm grateful for for you being here on the first day of your holiday. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much. So, get let, let's get into it for just a, a little sure. bit. Um, y- you and I talked about greatest hits. I was going to save this for later, but let's just go right to it. Um, let's do it. Yeah. And 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 you know, that is the name of, of, of your podcast. Um, so, so maybe a little bit of origin story about the ethos of, of greatest hits and, 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 and all of that and how that's worked its way in, in, into your lingo. Absolutely. That's such a great question. I love it. Thank you for the question. Um, I really believe that the best, Um, relationships I've had as as a teacher working for, um, you know, working with principals and for them, I suppose. Um, The best I've ever done has been for people who have believed in me or who have made, at least made an effort to appreciate what I feel are interests of mine or passions. And as soon as somebody makes me feel like that that there's something I can offer that's a bit special or um, unique, I will work so hard and I will do double, you know, double time on the effort for leaders like that. And I don't know if I just got lucky, but I've had such good experiences with administrators. And I think that was the only reason why I was able to sort of branch out and go into sort of a supportive role in assessment. So when leaders are able to do that for you, Um, it gives you life. It breathes life into you. It breathes life into your career, a career that needs to have life, you know, breathed into it often because of how much you're giving to 30 students in front of you. And so out of gratitude for that, but also a sort of learning my lesson, I thought, wait, if I um, start a podcast, how can I use that beauty and that magic and bring that to the mic And not make it about me. I want to make it about others and give them the gift that I've been given. And so in doing that, all I had to, I just thought to myself, I've got to ask teachers, what is your greatest hit? What do you think would be the one magic ingredient or or interest or passion that you've brought forward to, to offer that, you know, that that ignites other people and that you know, sort of lights everything up. And um, I was really excited when, when I thought about it. I remember when it was, it was at, it was during Christmas, I thought about it. And I said, I think I'm going to do this because I want to give back what people have given to me. And I think sometimes when um, we are missing things in our lives, you know, if we feel that we're not, we're maybe invisible or not being seen. Um, I've, I've heard that quote, not sure who, who said this, but 
whatever you think you're missing, give it away, give it out to other people. Mm. And so, and, and it actually heals that part of you. So I think, especially with social media, we're talking about how it's very, it can be very self-promotional and feel competitive. I want to know, um, I'm fascinated to know what, what people feel is their greatest gift that they can bring forward and their, their passion or their interest. And anytime you ask people that, I'm going to tell you something, their eyes light up a little bit, even if it's just for a, a small period of time, it's that tiny little space where you can feel a little bit of magic. Yeah. And right. And, and so that's what I want to be a part of is, is magic and, and breathing sort of a, a bigger life into, into our, our profession, you know, yeah. That's, so that that's, was my reasoning. <laughs> I, I love that reasoning, Jennifer, and 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 I love how you weave those words so beautifully. And I remember when you know because I do follow you on on social media. That's how we we connected. Um, because initially I I followed you because of our mutual friend Eric Francis, and, yes. and, and and I know we have great love and respect for for Eric, and and then. I also know too that that you like like me are are a fitness uh, buff and 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 so that was kind of where oh okay and then and then I remember in December wow somebody else gets the whole greatest hits thing besides me and and uh, be, because and, and, but then I also think too that as I hear you share that and and I love the 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 kind of loving compassion that you're surrounding educators in because. It, it doesn't happen enough in our profession. Um, but, but there is a, there is a, and I don't know if this was subconscious or, or intentional on your part, but, but there is kind of a beautiful bridge between a greatest hits album, which is representative of, of, of an artist's work. And, yes. and, and, and then also the work that you do, I just kind of made this connection here with portfolios, you know, and, and. Oh Yeah. That, that's brilliant, Sean. <laughs> See, that's why we're friends. Is yes, I exactly. have that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that, you know, and again, I don't know yeah. if that's, that, that must well, be a subconscious thing, you know. Well, it's, and, and that's interesting that you say that because we're, you know, the sort of the segue into assessment, of course, is that love and that love and that belief in students that we have, um, show me your best. I mean, that's, that's a natural thing. And I think we do that as educators all the time. So when educators are asked and invited onto a show to sort of, to, to show their greatest hits or their portfolio, it's such, it's just such an honor. I can tell, I can tell I have no problem uh, having, having guests come on. The only, the only pushback I ever would get would be, I can't really think of anything I'm really good at. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I already can tell you what you're really, <laughs> you're really good at. But even, but just, just trying to access um, what people think their gift is, I think is powerful because it's self-belief as well. And it's self, -re you know, it's reinforcing. And when we do that for students too, what do you think you're good at? Like, what are, what do you really love and what could you bring to this classroom community, which I've, I've done many times through theater. Cause I cast kids in, in, you know, in, I love casting for theater, um, finding that those those perfect uh, matches for uh, for roles. So yeah, you're right. Actually, that is a natural extension. It really it really is. And, and good catch. I, I I just it just it's the decaf coffee. Um, but but <laughs> you know it you know so often we do pour into our students. There there is something to be said and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and to be upheld about having a student uh, develop a portfolio or develop their, 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 their greatest hits. It's a way, it's a, it's an alternative form of assessment. I know that many who are listening get it and understand it, but, but the reverse in terms of looking at the educator in the building and, and having the educator the, the, the teacher look at their greatest hits, look at their strengths, you know, and, and, and so often, you know, we, and I, I've been, I've been guilty of this um, as, as, as a leader. Well, you know, I, there's teacher appreciation week. I'm going to, I'm going to mm -hmm. jeans day this thing, you know, or, the, or we haven't had a jeans day in a few Fridays. 
I'll, go, I'll, I'll make a run to, 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 to Krispy Kreme or if I was in Canada. Oh, I was just, Sean, I was just going to say you're going to donut this thing. I'm going to donut know, this thing. I know, I know. I know. Starbucks I totally this thing. And, but <laughs> I, I love this notion and of, 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 of leaders with teachers um, building, you know, kind of a, a schoolhouse greatest hits album i love that sean that is Everyone such a good idea a track, you know? i love it you know what i'm i'm telling you like as a because it's always been sort of unspoken really um when good leaders like i have had the 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 privilege to work for them like I, I lucked out and i'm really really lucky and i recognize that but who say well i know that you love theater and i know that you love these things so let's see if we can hook jen up with this that or the other i'm telling you it it makes you it, it makes you feel so appreciated and people who do feel appreciated will work so hard and will bring their absolute best it, it just gives you that energy and that lift the way music does right so i think that is a brilliant framework for um, for a leader to use um, in terms of what's, you know, what's your greatest hit? Like, what do you want to really, really explore this year and bring to the table? Because it's unspoken. I mean, I think teachers, if you ask them in a building, they know who's good at what. But, but to have sort of more of a concrete or tangible representation of that and to really bring life to, breathe life into it, wow. Yeah, that would be really exciting. I love that. And 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 it could be something. Thank you. And it could be something where, um, if if I was in that schoolhouse, let's say, and if I was coaching yes. with you, and yes. then and then and and if we all had our track, and we all had this giant greatest hits album, and then I knew, okay, I can go. Je Jennifer's yes. greatest hit is assessment or portfolio. Yeah you know, learning yeah. or, or whatever, or, you know, Sean's is Socratic seminars. And then, you know, yes. kind of like a, with the greatest hits album, you know, I, know. I, I, I the, the, these are the best tracks or this has the best solo or whatever. I'll, I'll go Absolutely. to the teacher, I'll go to Jennifer because she's going to help me be better um, with assessment. Absolutely. It's the feature. It's, it's, it's what we are featured as. And I think honestly, um, as we know, the profession, it's a profession because of its level of complexity and difficulty. It's why it's not a job, it's a profession. And there's lots that, that you can always find wrong. I mean, anybody can look and say, oh, I, I can see this, that, and the other. But, but really um, breathing life into what somebody's, um, what they think to they're good at, you know, what they're really good at. And it's interesting because I wonder if teachers um, would say the same thing about each other, what we think they're good at, but, or, or really adept with, but um, I think breathing life into that and making it a little more visible and a bit more accessible would be great rather than, oh, no, no. If you want to know about art, go down the hall to the left. She's, she's your go-to. It would be really creative and cool to to um, see it more as a greatest hits and uh, and uh, make it a little a little uh, more glossy and 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 fun. Yeah, we need yeah. we need that. And it wouldn't take a ton of effort. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just it's just featuring people for for how well they do at something with something. Yeah. And it creates community. It creates a sense of belonging, and and it creates. Belonging. And absolutely efficacy you know <laughs> i think so too and the, and the fact that you're an important part of a team because i'm telling you <laughs> there's nothing worse than feeling like you're just showing up you know and and you're there because you've signed the contract you need to be an important part of that team and we do that in classrooms we build community in classroom building community with teachers would be just like a really great sort of project to to follow i'd be interested in being part of that definitely yeah i, I think i think we may have just developed a i think so project that that we we might be able to work on or, or develop an article around and and Love uh, it. i'm, I'm I think, thinking about a theme i and, know me yeah. too <laughs> yeah, we a, we're not gonna i've already taken notes so we're gonna we're not gonna let okay, this go perfect don't let it drop don't drop the ball so uh, what 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 has compelled you to the profession what is your what is your origin story what what is what is your prequel to to oh. your epic 
your epic film that, that you're oh. living right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you, Sean, for seeing it that way. That's very beautiful. Um, honestly, I was interested in journalism and um, I was accepted to a school of journalism after I finished my Bachelor of Arts in Education. Um, I'm fascinated with interviewing and I would say interrogating. Although I find all of that very interesting. I find people interesting and I want to know more about them. So that was sort of my love and my interest. Um, and But I didn't think I'd have the creative outlets that I would have in education. And creative outlets meaning um, the capacity to be quite creative with curriculum and bring people into it and, and build excitement um, in curriculum. So that was sort of the the move um, to education. And um, and I thought I could get in the, the fascination with journalism within the education community because I'd be doing a lot of writing and a lot of tracking and a lot of getting to know people and figuring out what makes them tick and, and whatnot. So that that's me. Wow, which, which again, you, as, as a podcaster and, and, and really that, and, and really as an educator, that whole inquiry based, uh, you know, uh, aspect of, of journalism, you know, fit, fits in beautifully with, with, with the work that you've pursued. Oh, it's, it's very journalistic. It, yeah. <laughs> all of those skill sets are, are definitely being tapped, uh, tapped into. And, but again, there's a, there's a creative, uh, definitely creative outlet. And, and also, I just felt a, a real kinship with with um, younger younger children when I was volunteering at the University of Alberta Hospital. Um, I used to do kindergarten tours, uh, to to try and uh, you know we tour kindergarten students through the hospital just to kind of give them a sense of what the hospital was and why it's not scary and you know and all these things and I really loved it. So I thought, well, maybe this is, you know, maybe this would be a, a good uh, a good move for me. So. Yeah, you know, it's it, I'm I'm proud of, of what I've done and and I do love the kids and their parents. So wow. How how many years has it been for for you in education? Oh, um well, my first uh contract was 2000. Wow. So yeah, so it's been it's been it's been a long like 20 I guess yeah, 24 years. Yeah. So and and I've always kept my feet in the classroom or uh, in in various ways whether it would be a learning commons like a library or right now I'm working in resource which is um, developing and running programs for um, children with with uh, need, um, individual needs like the individual education plans or IEPs and exceptional children so I, I sort it sort of spanned lots of different uh, um, areas which I love. Wow, that's uh, that's yeah. quite that's quite the 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 spectrum of of, yeah. of experiences, and I and I know and and for those who may I I know that you do a lot of professional development, and, and yeah. those those oh. that uh, may not be familiar, I'd love for you to kind of share a little bit about uh, the offerings that you that you develop and 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 mm -hmm. share and, and provide educators uh, support in. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Sean. That's a great question. Um, my my great um i think love and passion is um building capacity for people to shine mm -hmm. so whether we're building a set you know for an upcoming musical whether we're creating costumes or um creating um mm -hmm. frameworks of relationships in the classroom for children to shine um, I also feel that a forgotten element is our educators are often forgotten in we're expected to to be able to shine within our career without sometimes the necessary frameworks for success. And well, in fact, I, I, I felt it myself. And so I don't come out of this looking really great in that. I've learned from my mistakes. They, they were all based on mistakes. So my first five years of teaching that's that's where all of my frameworks come from is oh wow i'm never doing that again i'm never leaving everything until report card time to try and you know um, organize portfolios that's ridiculous i have to start from the beginning so 
essentially um, my, my passion is creating frameworks that represent and elicit um, research-based principles in assessment. So formative assessment, power of formative assessment and, and effective summative assessment are so important. Um, and they've been written about at length and, and it's research-based, we know that. But who takes that, you know, that, that excellent understanding and creates concrete, tangible um, frameworks for teachers to use that are, um, that are basic enough or content neutral enough that they can be used in a variety of situations. Who's doing that? Well, some people will do that on the fly. They'll give it a try. Um, some people will go online and search endlessly for, hey, that rubric looks kind of like it might kind of match the learning standard. It'll make it work, you know. Um, but I think there's a more effective way to go about that. And I think that if we're being... Um, truthful about what we want teachers to accomplish, which is an awful lot um, with differentiating, with UDL, with um, individualized um, pathways to learning, then we better be able to provide the tools necessary to build that and to construct that. And that's where the tool, I think the tools are, are sorely missing. Um, and that's not just me, that's feedback, you know? And the irony too is, my son just started um, working in, um, in the trades. No one would ever say to him, we expect this from you, but we're gonna give you autonomy with however you, you fix that, you know, that item or you drive that, or you operate those, the, that machinery that costs us a lot of money, go for it, we'll give you some autonomy. That's not where we want autonomy. We want autonomy with our, create, our greatest hits, or our, our creativity mm -hmm. we don't want autonomy with you're going to have to make your own rubrics or you're going to have to come up with your own learning progressions so that you can show that you've you know um, incorporated formative assessment within each of these standards and 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 included all of the students in your classroom and looked at your tier one two and three students you know like that's not autonomy that's just dropping the ball so <laughs> that's that's my personal opinion um and so i've worked very hard to do the black and white, to do the, um, the framework with which people can build their particular magic in the classroom, mm. the set. Yeah. yeah, it's it's powerful because, you know, so often as we shared earlier, like uh, whatever au courant, you know, education, educational thing, if it's differentiation, alternative assessment, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. cooperative learning, Yes. We, we're we're very good about kind of the the brush strokes and and we are. and 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 the the end result, but but very but really, the the teacher just wants the means to the end. Just give they me, do. give yeah. me the tool. I agree. Uh, I if agree. that's the tool you want me to use, um, yeah. and and I'll figure out the rest. I know my kids, and and yeah. we'll 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 work together, and 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 we'll go for it because you know, frankly, teachers don't have time. No, um, they don't. And 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 the stamina is 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 not there, you know. No. So it's um it it's 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 a challenge. Um you know with yeah, um, with our diverse classrooms, which all of us are are fine with, by the way, that's not where the, the pushback comes from or the concern comes from. You can have a very diverse classroom. I think we've had them for the last 20 years, to be honest. I think we need very, um, very well um, crafted tools, or we need tools that can elicit, again, elicit and sort of um, manage that caseload. And, and um, whether, you know, there's, there's ready-made tools for unpacking standards and showing how they can be used within you know, um, a classroom to delineate and to articulate steps. My goodness, that was the feedback I got, you know, from, from learning progressions, for example, that's just one example is thank goodness somebody's delineating or articulating steps. Why wouldn't you want to do that for educators? So we know what the path is. Of course we want to do that. 
And you're right, Sean, we're really good with, um, with, with slogans and with um, big ideas and, and people buy into them because we're good people and we want the kids to have fun and, and to enjoy learning. But the how does that look in the classroom? That's actually the number one question I get is, mm -hmm. and it's funny because we could probably write a book about that. So how does that look in action? What does that look like exactly? And um, that's, that's the, I think the meat and potatoes of the big ideas that we come up with is, is if you can't represent that for me visually and in a framework, did you think it through, you know, <laughs> like just, just asking for a friend. Um, and that's why I think that the work of Tom Gusky um, and Eric Francis is so powerful. I've, I've, shared that a lot and and that's where the majority of, of any of my help that I offer teachers comes from is here's the here's the researched um, or evidence-based information about um, assessment and best practice and uh, here's how we can accomplish this so it's not flashy and it doesn't have the curb appeal of assessment uh you know exciting new news or revolutions or whatever it's not exciting but um it's very crucial and important absolutely and and for those jennifer who may not be familiar with thomas gusky or or eric francis right, eric right. actually has been on this podcast before and eric and i go way back as as you do with him as well but but maybe a quick crash course sure. in their sure. work because I, because i do know that both of their their books and their works uh, drive your work and, and are very, have, have inspired you. They have actually. Yes. And in, in that um, it's the, it's the two, it's the two dimensional or paper version application version for me, where you take um, sort of loft, what I would consider to be a loft, like lofty ideas or big ideas and put them into usable uh, frameworks and components. And so the first book that I think every educator should have um, mm -hmm. is Deconstructing Depth of Knowledge. And the reason why is because we, you know, you got to start from the, from the start when you're building, when you're uh, building frameworks, you need to know what the learning standard is requiring in terms of cognitive complexity in order to effectively build instruction to, to help students reach that. So we're, we're delineating or articulating steps in that instruction to get to the ceiling of the standard, not beyond it, not below it, but to the standard. And the power in knowing this, when I read this, I felt that it had unlocked for me power, extraordinary power in, in being able to look at language because it's all language and standards all over the world their, their language. So if you can look at language and the way that Eric describes it is um, how to take that language and, and um, classify it in depth of knowledge one, two, three, or four, it's demand. Um, you have so much power in terms of, oh, well, now I know my assessment is going to align to the ceiling of the standard. If it's a DOK3 requirement requirement of this standard, if that's what it's asking students for, then my instruction needs to align with that cognitive complexity. I need to be offering instructional um, opportunities where students can practice that and be able to, to um, show that summatively. That, I mean, of course we know that. But unless you can see that in two dimensions, unless you can see that as a concrete um, set of steps or sequence of instructional steps, it's really hard to do that on the fly okay. and to prep your instruction up to the, the ceiling of the standard. And additionally, we are inundated now uh, with, um, you know, teachers pay teachers and all these online offerings of all of these instructional strategies and here's a lesson hey there's great stuff out there but unless you have a way of um, categorizing what is this lesson asking students to do what's the learning standard it's attached to then we have that really um a really hard time with with um making sure that we know what the learning standard is 
and a learning activity, that those are two very different things. Mm -hmm. The learning activity should support the, uh, a student's ability to show understanding with, within the learning standard. And you can't mix those two things up. And we often do. And that's when you get the problem of found this great thing on, you know, teachers pay teachers. It's a science activity. I love it. Totally matches the language of the standard. But are you marking the learning activity out of 50? <laughs> like it's a booklet out of 50. Yeah. Okay. 45 out of 50. Ooh, that's, that's awesome. There's an A. The problem with it is that's the learning activity. What was the standard and did the assessment questions or did your assessment of that align effectively to um, the learning standard? So that's a question. Or is it just sort of in the same ballpark and we assign a numerical value to it? That's, I think, where standards-based assessment has um, become difficult for people is because we're not carefully delineating. Like, separating the two things that's a learning activity this is the learning standard does this support this yes or no and to what degree okay is it a step in the sequence to the the summit of the final goal if yes then we're not averaging all of those things that's a step that's a that's a foundational step on my learning ladder so you know i i'm going through a sequence and i'm not summatively assessing until i have enough information to assess at the um, ceiling of the standard. Mm. And so there's a multiple ways that something as simple as a learning, and I know people use learning ladders, but a learning progression, using DOK to, to categorize the, um, the cognitive demand of the learning intention, mm -hmm. there are multiple design issues that are solved just using that. Mm. And, 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 and the, the intentionality behind it too, it, it, it there's also, and, and beautifully said, and, and, and I hope, and, and I know Eric would, would be very pleased with, with, with your, with your, uh, your whole premise. Um, but there's also, and there's also the notion of the intentionality. I agree. And, and the awareness of the child, the student. And, and, and if you, if you have that intentionality and, and that learning ladder and that learning progression, but then also the student at the center of that, yeah, man, that's where the magic and the beauty. I think, so, I think so too. And the, and, and we were talking about this um, prior. So the other book that I would highly recommend, um, I'm digging through it right now <laughs> is implementing mastery learning. This is Tom Gusky. Um, so <laughs> it, it's, it is a classic. It is a definitive classic. There's no question on that. And the thing with Tom is that he's, he's a bit intimidating, really, when you look at his credentials. But my goodness, when you talk to him, he makes things sound um, really, um, really inviting and very beautiful, and as he is as a human being. So I would recommend anyone to, to read his books. And the reason why is because what he does is he applies um, the research of Benjamin Bloom and just and, and really just shows step by step what it means to unpack a standard and what it means to um, uh, assess standards or assess learning intentions on the way to the standard as uh, as our practice and formative assessment. So that's one thing that he that he does really beautifully. He uses um, a slightly different method aside from building a, what I build with learning progressions, he uses a slightly different method, but it's the same concept that you have to be very aware of what the learning standard is asking of students first. And I don't know, honestly, as a teacher, I admit this fully. I don't, again, I don't come out sounding good at all. I don't know if I really was aware all the time and of exactly what it was asking for. And that's why I always had that sick feeling of, ooh, this is my summit of assessment. Is it really getting to the crux of what I'm, I'm trying to find out if students know yes or no? Like that alignment, my goodness, that's important. Um, and you can't do that on the fly and you shouldn't have to. These things need to be prepped ahead of time. And particularly now with our BC curriculum, it is so broad and so vague, that language 
deliberately so because they're trying to get student, get teachers to be a bit more creative with with um, how they instruct. But again, we need a lot of um, unpacking. We need a lot of, um, of being specific about exactly what that is going to look like instructionally, that instructional plan, and exactly those those points, those checkpoints on the road map of let's stop here. We don't have this, you know, particular learning intention. Um, that's not that's not been acquired yet. So we have to wait until we have that before moving forward, you know, and that's the entire premise of mastery learning is making sure all of those, that sequence of um, uh, learning intentions is mastered so that the, the standard is essentially mastered. And, and, and to, to dovetail that it's, you know, when I think of mastery learning or, or standards-based assessment, it's the power of yet, you know, yes. we're, we're, we're not there yet. Um, the, the intentionality of, of the teacher, you know, also, uh, denotes a level of equity for, for the student and, and meeting li literally meeting students where they are empowering students. But I, that's, that's the beauty of mastery learning. It's not, it's, we're, we're not there yet. You're, 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 this is the direction you're heading in the right direction, but I don't know. I just, I, I've always felt. I love that. it too. Yeah. And you know what? Tom Gusky described it so beautifully. He was talking about Benjamin Bloom and the entire premise is not setting lower standards for some students. No. Is not, it is equity. And so when it's so beautiful and ironic, and that's what I love about the, that the, the creative aspect of that, it's actually very beautiful in its um, shadows because we often see it, those two things as being um, counterintuitive, like, well, we have high standards here, are the standards, this is what we're checking for on your way to the summit of goals. So essentially a learning progression is, you know, summit of checkpoint or formative checkpoints on the way to the summit of or the, the long term goal that that's, you know, well, it, you know, that's that's very um, sort of there's too many expectations or there's you know, it's, it's unfair and people won't meet these goals, et cetera. But the irony is that is equity because you are treating everyone in the room as if they can and you believe they can. And if not, we keep working at it and we ramp up the supports. We don't lower the expectations. We ramp up the level of support. And that is equity. So when I see equity grading, like all these, these slogans, I think, oh, you could trace that right back to Benjamin Bloom. You could trace that back to something Gusky already wrote. We're just repackaging. So you mentioned uh, and, and even before we, we hit record on this conversation, Jennifer, you, you talked about and, and you, you've, you've kind of peppered it throughout throughout our conversation the beauty uh the the beauty in 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 in, ed, in education the beauty in assessment uh the the beauty in in in, in ideas I, i'd love for you to kind of extend extend that further because we we do you know there is a um there's beauty in the design of the tool there's there's beauty in the design of of the assessment but but you know it's kind of like when i refer to making your school a masterpiece um, you know, you, you don't necessarily put that, that's a metaphor that you don't hear too often. Uh, and, and the same thing with the beauty in education, I, I'd, I'd love for you to kind of, um, unpack that metaphor, uh, for absolutely. Us. Oh, absolutely. I'm happy to. And this again is nothing about me. This is why I'm so fascinated with talking to educators about what they feel their greatest hit is because, um, and, and we were, we're sort of, um, talking a little bit about, um, John Hattie and and effect size and those things and and um, how important it is to have belief and I think belief is beauty and mm -hmm. and belief in um, a student's capacity so I saw I witnessed it this year I was I'm a resource teacher so I'm in a support position and I think it's really interesting that it's easy to fall into the trap when you're tired of, yeah, but if, you know, if the kids in front of me were this, that, or the other, it would be so much easier to do it, mm. to implement mastery learning. But the irony is <laughs> the, the, 
the mastery learning or the beauty is actually in your belief and in how you approach if you believe that students can do certain things it's not the quality of the person walking in the door are you kidding me like no way it's it's your belief actually changes i think as you there's I mean, it sounds esoteric, but it's not. Your your belief in what you're seeing in front of you actually alters the reality. So I can think of one example of a student who came in with, um, you know, all the, the learning plan, uh, behavior plans and wouldn't go in the classroom and didn't do this, didn't do that. Um, couldn't manage classroom, even being in a classroom. And this particular teacher was so, and is, a master teacher but just believed so strongly and and was very overt with the student and said I had no you're a reader you are a brilliant child you just don't know it yet so you're going to come on in here you and me we're friends everyone in here cares about you like that's how she sets it up and that to me is is magic and it's beautiful because you actually are altering reality like it, it would be much easier just to say, well, you know, it came with a long list of these uh, complaints, right? you know, and uh, well, that's just who he is. No. And sure enough, she had that person believing in himself so deeply by the end of the year, and he made such big strides. And again, who cares about grade level? I don't care. What I care about is that we have our baseline assessment. And this is where assessment is, I think, if it, it could be the side, it could be the partner or, you know, it could be the, you know, your side hustle or whatever. But if you're good with assessment and you have um, and you're able to think about, OK, I'm going to take a baseline like we do and I'm going to compare it for this student for where he is at, in June. Oh, wow. There is a portfolio right there. That's all portfolio is, is showing growth over time in relation to a learning standard. So that's what I'm saying is that assessment has such magic and beauty in it because it's actually saying, I believe if I take photos along the way that there's going to be some really amazing um, learning happening. I believe that. And, mm -hmm. and, and, that's why I'm obsessed with portfolios and, and showing growth over time, not worrying about is this grade level or not. I know that there that comes into it, but, you know, be able to phone the parents and say, you're never going to believe this. Came in to the school with, you know, knowing a few letter sounds now reading at the end of grade one or the beginning of grade two. Oh, my goodness. In a few months time, that's huge growth. And it's all to do with love and nurturing. It really is. And belief. I really, and, and I, I've seen it so many times, and I know you have too. When you see it, you think, oh, that's why research supports that is it's actually what you believe, you know? And I'm telling you that the educator that I work with, I would pass on messages from the parents that I would get that were positive about her. I'd say, you'd never believe what this parent just told me. They adore you. You're wonderful. Um, you know, you have magic. I would say that to her all the time. And I could see, actually, and you can tell when you talk to people that way, in a loving way, they almost like, it's just, you can see that energy come up in them and they just, and they start to shine and they have a way better day. So it takes nothing out of my day to say to her, you're never going to believe what, you know, the assessment looked like um, based, uh, you know, compared to three months ago, you are magic. I'll say her name's Sandra. She's wonderful. You're magic, Sandra. The love that you give these kids is so important. And I can tell how much they're growing. You're, you know, wow. Right. That just, and she, she told me, she said that made me, you know, sort of fly through my week. And, and uh, so I, I think there's, there's a magic and a beauty to um, believing that not only if we we treat students with that kind of love and compassion that that really amazing things can happen but educators i think we need to do that more often it it it's so key um because again when we talk about it's kind of going back to our greatest hits project that we're yeah. we're toying with here yeah um you know so often we we think of this kind of um one directional output right so, yeah, so teacher, 
giving yeah. output to, to child, but then I'm also putting this through the lens of leadership. And if, and if I want to build a culture of collective efficacy, if I want to build a, a culture or a shared vision of, 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 of teacher leadership, that belief yeah. must also emanate from the leader to go to, you know, Hey, Jennifer, listen, I, I was in your classroom today and thank you so much because you have renewed my hope on, yes. on assessment. And, and, and yeah. I would love to see right there. There, this gift with, with whomever, you know, and I believe, well, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not a leader. I don't know that. No, 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 no. You are a leader. You, you can do this and, and I'll be there with you. Um, you know, that I, I again, that I would also say, Jennifer, um, and I took note of it and you need to claim this, uh, belief is beauty. That that's, that's you. That's, that's, you, you need, that, that needs to be a hat <laughs> or the name of your next, oh. uh, uh, PD session or, or, or something. Um, okay. I, I, I really, I, I'm going to hold you to that uh, or a blog post or something. I'm definitely going to blog about belief um, after this conversation. And I'm, and, and I definitely, but, but again, for those who are listening, um, you know, even, even if you're, you're thinking, well, I'm not the principal, I'm not the, the, the director, or I, I'm not, I'm not a teacher leader uh, like, like, like Jennifer, um, don't don't wait to share that belief with someone else. Don't wait. Oh no, oh. no, don't do do that. When and I mean, I'm not. Uh, I'm sure that it's. Um, again, it sounds esoteric, and it probably has started that way. But I actually think we're becoming better, um, or I am anyway, with things like gratitude journaling. I know Sean, you do that as well, and it actually has changed. It has actually altered how I view my reality. When I wake up in the morning and I can write down four things that I'm so extremely grateful for, it does alter your reality. So why would we not apply that to a classroom that essentially is your, you know, uh, your temple? Like, I mean, you're there every day, you're inhabiting it every day. And so when you see beautiful things in what teachers are doing, say it. No, I have never had a teacher say to me, oh, uh, that, that's embarrassing, or I disagree. They just are so happy to hear um, to hear what you see them doing. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of areas where we can critique and pull things apart. And I actually don't think it has the, um, the energy and the, the um, capacity for growth that what you just said would. Because then when you talk to me like that, I think, oh, and then if you were to say to me, hey, are you interested in learning more about X, Y, and Z, you know, with your PE classes or whatever, I'd be 100% on board, <laughs> you know, because that's where I was a little weaker. I wasn't as good there. But yeah, that's that's essentially leadership. But I think it's... Um, um, I think it's more now than ever important um, in our professions, because I think every educator would agree that that it is, it's, it's difficult and it's very draining emotionally. Yeah. So you, you echo to the work of um, uh, my, my good friend, Lainey Rao, uh, you know, who wrote uh, okay, that beautiful yes. book, uh, Evolving with Gratitude. She's been on the podcast oh, yes. before and, and she's created, um, you know, her own version of a, of a gratitude journal, uh, bold gratitude. So, but there's a, there's science and beauty behind the notion of, 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 of gratitude. Oh yeah. I've seen that. So, um, and, and science and beauty between the notion of journaling daily, it, 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 it does fill the soul and, 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 and really compels beautiful action. Uh, you know, you know, Jennifer, if, if I were to visit Canada now, and, mm -hmm. and I just want to go there for a second, cause I've never been, and I've always wanted to go. Um, and, and I need to go one day and, and, uh, I, I don't want to open up any Stanley cup, uh, baggage. I know we, we're, we're just, I, my, my heart went out to you, you know, I, oh. I didn't have a dog in the fight, but, but if I, if I, I were, if I, if, if I were to cheer for a team, I, I, I would have been Edmonton, you know, all the way. So, uh, with you, but, but, um, if, if we were to, um, you know, if I was to visit in Canada and I'd say, Hey, let's go to your, mm -hmm. let's go to your, uh, your local record store. 
and and I, I'd say, Jennifer, what 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 what's the greatest hits album that that you're going to pick up? I, I'm just curious about your your musical sensibilities and and, yeah. and those albums that like you're going to man, you, you need this greatest yeah. hits album, Sean. What 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 are those greatest hits albums for you from those artists? Well, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, of course, I I had my pop era, and I and I do. I, I was so incredibly drawn uh, to Madonna's work, of course, because it was a little bit rebellious and I grew up religious. So I understood a lot of her imagery and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, um, and I mentioned this, it's that that elevator music of, of the early 80s, the Christopher Cross. Yes. It's, my favorite song um, is Sailing. Love that and song. It's, it, it, I do. I grew, I remember when that album came out. My, my parents had that album with the pink flamingo on the cover. Yeah, sailing and and his music. It's yeah. and I think it's because mom and dad, and I think it's to do with with our um, how we grew up and what you connect it to. Um, but I remember my parents would. We weren't allowed to listen to rock music, but but they would put on the soft hits. Um, Same in my house. And of course. Christopher Cross was on there and so were the Eagles and all of those those hits that were very melodic and and sort of um Phil Collins and 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 artists like that so I would say Christopher Cross has has an effect on me but I think it's 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 largely to do with the fact that I remember it drags me back to that time and it and when I say drag I mean drag because it it pulls you back without without your you know, permission. It does. And it, it actually places you back in that, um, the space that you were in at the time and the energy. It's time travel. It really is. And that's why we all love it. Yeah. So, mm. you know, sailing is so beautiful for me personally, that, that album with the pink flamingo, I can't remember the album name, but, um, I think because, <sighs> If you looked at him as an artist, he did not look like the person who would have sang that. You know, like he wore a hockey jersey and he was just kind of, you know, you'd think he was just he, a down earth bro. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of he kind of looked like he'd be in a, you know, just like a garage rock band or something. Yeah. But it was so profound. Like if you listen to that song and look at the lyrics, it's very profound and very ahead of its time because it is true that what you imagine and what you're thinking, you can you can have that happen. You, yeah. you can. And, and I mean, there's, there's science to back it, but I think he was quite ahead of his time in that respect, although it came across and it was, it was put out as just sort of like, Oh, that's relaxing. Yeah, no, it's actually very profound. Um, and, and I love that, that energy to take into whatever I'm doing in this case, you know, education. And I used it as one of the um, soundtracks to, uh, one of our musicals that we that we produced as a class um, in the sort of in one of our our sort of final slideshows. So that that's where I would go. I would go the elevator music of the eighties because of, of how profound an effect it had on me physically and and sort of the that um, it's very hopeful and innocent still. Yeah, there you know there is a lot of nostalgia that I have for that particular album. Uh, you know, being a child of of the seventies and 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 eighties, <laughs> and remembering just that time because music is a form of time travel. It does, it is. you know, it it does take you back, you know, and it, and for me, it 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 you know, if I hear a certain song, so um, you know, something like Sailing, like oh man, I remember dad, mom played that album all the time, and I'm yes, I'm I know. You know, I know summer days and 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 those things and and uh, and and then Madonna, you know that, that which, which was forbidden in our house as well, uh, but we still <laughs> listen to it anyway. Oh, you know. We have so many things in common, Sean. Oh yeah. my goodness! I think we just explained each other. I think quite we did well. too. <laughs> I think we did too. Yeah, there was only there was only one radio station that we could listen to growing yes. up, and that was the soft Us rock. Too. Our station it we couldn't was, watch that, it was soft hits and it was yeah. all love too right yeah. like There's it was that was the <laughs> other thing that i think was quite somewhat wholesome about it too is that um i just grew up with a dad who adored my mom uh, completely and used to say oh that you know those words describe how i feel about you and so i was really lucky that way 
and so you know the music of Phil Collins and and um, Elton John they actually have profound effects on me and I, I really love them a lot um, and I think um, they're also it's also timeless although you and I probably are we think that it's timeless music maybe other people don't but I, I Pretty sure they it, you could say that music's timeless you know I would make it's that, still I would played make that yeah i would make the argument that you know uh, madonna's live to tell is is as good oh, as valid as as it any, is um, i agree you know, i so agree much, on that you know, one it's a beautiful song oh, right? you know? very profound yes, yes i agree beautiful song you know and uh uh, Ray of Light, which is Latter Day Madonna. Yeah. That's one of my workout yeah. songs, you know. And yeah, it's uh, beautiful. Which is which is really she, cool. She was actually very deep. Yeah, extremely deep. I know, I know, and it, of course, just was was sort of misunderstood in many ways. But um, no, I agree on that one. I do. Live to Tell is actually um, is probably I, I agree is probably has the same um, sort of. Um, uh, depth or um you know effect as as um sailing would would uh for sure yeah that's a good point yeah i may i may and that now and then of course christopher cross is other i mean he's he's one of those guys like he's got a, a few dozen hits but but the one I, that i also love on that same album uh ride like the wind that's oh, a great, I know. that's another great workout song featuring um uh, the the uh the, the vocal stylings of michael mcdonald um oh and a, michael mcdonald i mean come on that's another that's another one from from that time right right oh, that, yes it they are so important in our lives you know wow i keep forgetting you know those those songs michael mcdonald yes i agree yeah music is is that universal and divine thread that that ties us together and, and, and is, and, and I, and I love that it's, it's a time machine it and, is. It, and it takes us back and it's a great entry point uh, into so many things. With, with I think so too. Folks, right? I do. Yeah. So, so, so Jennifer, how can folks uh, track you down and, and follow you and, and uh, you know, you, you've got such a great social media presence uh and and i i enjoy i enjoy following you i enjoyed 90s day uh the other day when you posted that was fun didn't have to do a lot of work for that one apparently i gotta update my uh my closet a little bit <laughs> um so yeah no a really great way um is i mean twitter um is is probably one starting point but i'm easy i found a um an easy name. It's Genmo. So J E N M O dot org. That's my website. Brilliant. And there's so many free offerings on there. Um, and all of my um, contact details are there. Um, I get lots of uh, just, you know, 15 minute consultation requests, and then we can talk chat and, and how can I help you out? Um, and uh, no, I'm really excited to to just meet people. And and honestly, it's it's a hobby for me. So I'll be working all summer on um, on some new projects and whatnot. So yeah, feel free to reach out, folks, if you're interested in the uh, practical and and concrete and tangible tools of assessment um, to help your to help you know you as an educator work your magic. We all need a good frame, and we all need good frameworks. Uh, to work within to right. capture that magic so right on yeah it's it's very easy it's a very easy uh website genmo uh yeah, a e n m o dot org it's very That's easy it. <laughs> and, and that'll be the pathway and, I, and of course i'll put that in the uh, the show notes uh for folks um uh, to follow and click and bookmark and and then that'll lead to your instagram and your x account and facebook and, and all of those things so yeah. and, and big plans for for the the holiday or any any traveling any any adventures yeah, maybe any? vancouver maybe vancouver in the island that's that's my sort of my favorite my daughter has recently is right in the process right now of moving to edmonton she's a she's working as a power engineer in the oil sands so um, i'm an alberta girl and that's why i love the oilers just putting that out there um, it's oil country and it's, uh, some great work up there that she, that she's acquired. So she's moving. So that may be somewhere I go as well. And 
Alberta is my, is my, um, that's my hometown, Edmonton. So yeah, <laughs> that's why the, uh, yeah, the, the games are pretty exciting this time around. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing and just working on projects, um, as, I enjoy the outdoors. So right behind us, actually literally, you know, right behind us um, within about, you know, a five minute walk is my favorite trail. It's a, it's a steep incline trail and I either jog it or I walk it and um, I can get in 10,000 steps, Sean, in doing that twice a day. So those are my steps and it's, and because it's a slight incline, you also raise your heart rate up just enough, you know, so that, so it's in that fat burning zone. So you get that it's the targeted workout that you, that you want. So it's Thanks. that. Well, I wish you all of, all of the good things for a, for a well-deserved uh, holiday and break. And, and uh, I'm just excited to, to see um, the, the continued Good things that come from your work with portfolios Aww, you, and, and and learning I, and and I uh, I will definitely um, be be playing any greatest hits that that you have to offer. Um, good, that's excellent because there's lots of educators who who need to share their greatest hit, and with that comes usually something tangible or concrete that's attached to the podcast that educators can take and employ in their classroom within you know the next day so i appreciate that sean thanks for believing in me and thank you for your belief in other educators and your generosity with your with your kindness and your time because that that is not just so you know you're you're not a usual per like you're you're unusual in that way you're very giving and um um extraordinarily generous with your time and your um your uh, just noticing what other people are doing that that is great and i think that is your your greatest hit is is your um your kindness and um and noticing what educators are doing right and it saved me from a couple of dark places so Thank you. Just so that you know that 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 you are unusual in that respect and, and an absolute gift to uh, the people around you. So I want you to know that. I'm Jennifer. I'm very honored by that. I really am. Thank you so much. And and I man, I I don't thank you. I'm so grateful for you and grateful for our kinship and connection and and looking forward to future conversations and collaborations. I got, I've got a few ideas that I think, I think we might be able to have some fun with. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Friends, thank you so much for tuning into the Principal Liner Notes podcast. I am so grateful for my friend and bandmate and thought partner, Jennifer Moroz. Again, please feel free to reach out to Jen Jennifer on her website, genmo.org. I'll put all of that information in 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 the show notes she really is a treat and a gift and and someone that as, as you just heard will uplift and fill your soul with with such goodness and 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 beauty so thank you jennifer again as i saw as i sign off uh with our usual sign off and i think it's it's always fitting um with with just kind of where, where, where jennifer's work is coming from and it, and it does echo uh her work with finding the best in others and, and having them elicit that as their greatest hit. So don't forget to share with the world your dreams, your visions, your ideas, your greatest hits, because the world needs them and you help make the world a better place, just like my friend and bandmate, Jennifer. This is Sean Gaylord. This is the Principal Liner Notes podcast. Catch you on the flip side.